the unique tomb of Takshapsis at Abu Sir. Сегодня мы посетим гробницу пятой династии в некрополе Абусир, которая принадлежит царскому визирю и его жене. Это английская версия русскоязычного видео. Перевела и озвучила Анна Верволка, мой друг и коллега, также увлеченная древним Египтом. Ранее мы выпустили несколько совместных песен. Кроме того, Анна – писатель. Недавно была издана одна из ее книг в жанре фэнтези, вдохновленная древней египетской культурой. Ссылка в описании. So the fourth dynasty, marked by building the most monumental architectural structures of ancient Egypt, was over. Kings of the fifth dynasty no longer sought to create something grander than their predecessors. Their religious ideas were gradually changing, and so was their architecture. For example, the ancient Egyptians started rising sun temples expanding the necropolis territories and making their pyramid complexes more sophisticated. The Abu Sir necropolis is located between Giza and Saqqara. It is currently closed to the public. The first archaeological research of the royal necropolis of the 5th dynasty dates back to the end of the 19th century, and the archaeological studies of the ruins are still ongoing. In addition to other numerous finds, the most significant papyri of the old kingdom were found in the pyramid temples. Abu Sir was once a real city of the dead, gradually growing. Every necropolis was a city-forming enterprise with its own infrastructure. Some people imagine a city of the dead is nothing more but deserted tombs amidst the sands and vultures. But during the Old Kingdom it was more a city of the living, where priests dwelt serving the gods, honoring the dead in their rituals. Pilgrims flocked here. There were many priest schools, craftsmen's workshops, warehouses and other things. Now only ruins of the pyramids and tombs amidst the sands remain. The most well-preserved structures are the pyramids of Zahura, Neferirkara and New Serra, and the Sun Temple at Abu Gura. The unfinished pyramid of Neferefra is no less interesting. But today we will see the funerary complex that belonged to one of the most distinguished members of the royal court, Takshapsis, who was the vizier, or chati, and son-in-law of the fifth dynasty pharaoh Nusera Ini. This mastaba complex is unique as it is the most extensive non-royal tomb of the old kingdom. The chati was buried there along with his wife. The complex was first discovered by the German Egyptologist Richard Lepsius back in 1843. He classified the site as a pyramid due to its vast size and designated it to the complex as Pyramid Number 19. The archaeological excavation of the site, performed by Jacques de Morgan half a century later, revealed the site was actually part of a mastaba. De Morgan's archaeological research, published at the end of the 19th century, covered only one-third of the site. Unfortunately, he was unable to continue the large-scale excavations due to lack of time and financing. The site was left to the mercy of nature and sands of Abusir for another 70 years. 
In course of a series of excavations conducted from 1960 to 1974, primarily led by Egyptologists Zbigniew Zhaba and Abdu al Kereti, the ancient site was cleared up. Today we know it as the largest and the most complex non-royal tomb of the Old Kingdom. The Mastaba of Takshapsis was built in three phases. The entrance is located in the northeast corner of the complex. It is a structure consisting of two six-meter-high limestone columns shaped as lotuses, which support a fine limestone architrave. The columns represent the oldest known example of this type of design in ancient Egypt. The walls of the prayer room are decorated with scenes of the mortuary cult as well as Ptachepsis' biographical details. The burial chamber is located in the northwest corner of the tomb. It is a small room with two granite sarcophagi which were violated by the ancient robbers. A large one belongs to Ptachepsis, a smaller one is for his wife Hamerer Nepti. Just like the pyramids of Abu Sir, the Mastaba was heavily robbed many times and the mummies of Takshapsis and Hamerer Nepti were destroyed. In the New Kingdom, the Mastaba was used as a workshop for dismantling of the tomb and reuse of the stone in other buildings. The destructive activities continued until the Roman era, leaving Chati Takshapsis' tomb in ruins under the sands of Abu Sir. However, it should be noted that the careful attitude of the Egyptian specialists in conservation of ancient monuments ensured the safety of the site and allows more detailed research in the future. The fans of alternative history who travel to Abu Sir illegally are attracted to the site not because of the royal tombs or the megalithic mastaba of Takshapsis Jr. II. They want to see the black slab, which in their opinion is a product of some advanced civilization. For some unknown reason they say it's basalt, though the rock it's cut off is not actually basalt but a type of sandstone. This material was used for making some of the 4th, 5th and 6th dynasty's sarcophagi. The confusion of types of rock is common not only in Egyptology but also in other historical disciplines. In addition to the objective difficulties scientists face while distinguishing the rock in the field, the names of the types change over the time because mineralogy does not stand still. Also, many finds were described by the archaeologists a while ago in accordance with the old terminology and of course dependent on the geological knowledge of the archaeologists themselves. Therefore, sometimes we see that an old definition, often amateurish, migrates from one publication to another, and it simply doesn't occur to anyone to double-check it. In order to determine the type of rock accurately, one should cut a rock-thin section and study it under the microscope, perform a chemical and an X-ray fluorescence analysis of the rock composition. But these procedures are often destructive for the historical monument. However, 
Even if we try to visually determine the type of rock this slab is made of, looking at the nature of its fractures and the state of the polished surfaces, it doesn't look like basalt. It's a type of sandstone. The slab clearly shows traces of ancient abrasive technology, rough cutting and polishing. Moreover, the slab which we see today in the stone offering stand is not even mentioned in the latest detailed description of the local finds and the whole structure of the Mastava of Takshepsis Jr. II by Miroslav Barta. The stand is empty on the photos. Perhaps the slab was a stone blank for some stella or something like that, but we have no archaeological data to determine what it actually was. Despite even the fact that the site might look not as magnificent as the pyramids of Giza, the Abusir necropolis is a special place where one could feel spirit and might of the old kingdom, greatness of the kings who ruled after the famous 4th dynasty. <laughs>